evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Sherry Stewart. We begin with a tragic story tonight. Three men, 19 to 20 years old, died from carbon monoxide poisoning this weekend. The Lenaway County Sheriff's Office said they received a 911 call Saturday afternoon. First responders arrived to find five unconscious men inside a trailer. They were at a campground near the Faster Horses Festival in Brooklyn, Michigan. Three were pronounced dead at the scene. Two were taken to a local hospital in critical condition. Risk Reduction Officer Andy Marceau reminds us that carbon monoxide is an invisible killer. Over 400 people a year die from carbon monoxide, so you have to be cognitive of any time of year. You know, uh, campers are one of the worst ones because they're a closed, tight uh, situation. Carbon monoxide can come in many sources, including cars, appliances, and water heaters. Marceau encourages everyone to install a carbon monoxide alarm in their home and camper. As of Monday afternoon, the two surviving victims were still listed in critical condition. A 30-year-old Harrison Township woman was killed in a single car crash on Ossonique Road Sunday. Police say Chelsea Nicole Meldrum was the driver of a Jeep Wrangler with three passengers. Authorities say the Jeep drove onto the shoulder of a two-track, hit a trunk, stump, and overturned, killing Meldrum. One passenger was injured. Two others were treated for non-life-threatening injuries at Mid-Michigan Hospital. An East Tawas man is looking for answers after his cat was the victim of animal cruelty last week. Now we want to warn you that the pictures you're about to see are graphic. Eric Erickson says his neighbor allegedly shot Oliver in the neck July 11th, claiming self-defense. Erickson says he found Oliver on his porch eight days later and called around to neighbors to investigate. That's when he says the neighbor confessed. And she gets on the phone and she says, yeah, your cat was over here like normal and it was getting into it with one of my cats and it looked like it had rabies, so I shot it. And it's, it's a horrible thing, but he got lucky. That's a lucky shot of an arrow going through his neck to where he can eat. They took x-rays. They, they did everything they could to make sure he was going to be okay. The Iosco County Sheriff's Office told WBKB that this incident is being taken seriously and is under investigation. Sheriff Scott Frank says the department is working with animal control and will send a full report to the county's prosecuting attorney for review and potential charges. Erickson says Oliver is doing well and will come home today from the animal hospital. He'd like to thank the Iosco County Humane Society for their fundraising efforts to help cover medical costs. Now here is meteorologist Ellie Morrison with the first check of the weather. Ellie. Sherry, we're seeing clear skies, but hazy skies over the area. Not exactly a blue sky, and that's because wildfire smoke from way off to the west in western parts of the U.S. and Canada are drifting into the sky. So we're seeing a bit of that haze throughout the area. Temperatures this evening are going to cool off into the 70s, then overnight after midnight dropping into the 60s. We'll start tomorrow in the lower 60s. We have a weak cold front moving through, so it's going to feel a little bit cooler for tomorrow. We're going to have afternoon highs topping out around the upper 70s. I'll let you know when the humidity is going to drop and also when we could see a few showers between uh, the next 24 hours. That's coming up later in the newscast. Thank you, Ellie. We'll see you in a bit. Stocks around the world fell today as worried investors considered a global resurgence of COVID-19 fueled by the highly contagious Delta variant. Here in the U.S., cases of COVID-19 have nearly tripled in the last few weeks alone. Elise Preston has the latest. Hospitalizations of COVID-19 patients are up 36% according to the CDC, and 97% of those patients are unvaccinated, like this 62-year-old woman in Arkansas. There's occasions where I cough and I can't stop. Arkansas is now in its third surge with 12 out of every 100 people testing positive for the virus. Hospitals are filling once again. To put it into perspective, our team is in the fourth quarter right now, or maybe even double overtime. They're tired. It's, it's tough. 
The CDC reports cases are rising in all 50 states, including here in New York, and that hasn't happened since January. To stop the upward trend, health experts say more people need to get vaccinated. Every country is begging for vaccines. We have more vaccines you know, than we have people, and yet we're not using them. It really doesn't make sense. Today, President Biden blamed social media for circulating vaccine misinformation. It's killing people. It's bad information. My hope is that Facebook, instead of taking it personally, that somehow I'm saying Facebook is killing people, that they would do something about the misinformation. On Wall Street, stocks opened sharply lower Monday with concerns over the spread of the Delta variant. Shares of airlines, cruise lines, and hotels took the biggest hits. What investors are uh, saying right now is that we're concerned about the further reopening of the economy, at least in the short term, um, and we're really trying to get out of the assets that are seen as the most risky. It came on the heels of a record-setting weekend of travel, with 2.2 million people passing through airport checkpoints Sunday. That's the highest number since early March 2020. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. The Community Foundation for Northeast Michigan has awarded scholarships to more than 300 students this year. 158 awards totaling close to $300,000 went to students in Alpena and surrounding counties. One Rogers City student shares why hers means so much. 18-year-old Mackenzie Bruning applied for several scholarships and received four. She has plans to complete ACC's nursing program and become a nurse practitioner. Bruning explains why one of her scholarships means so much. So I got chosen for the Elaine Klein scholarship. She was she was a nurse and I believe she still is a nurse doctor, whatever. And she was my baby doctor. She delivered me. That was kind of special. Executive Director Lori Nugent says many scholarships are not just determined by academic achievement. Every scholarship has a story. And that story is also a legacy because those donors, they have a story they want to tell and they live that story through their scholarship recipients and through the legacy of the scholarship that will uh, continue to give. Bruning has some advice for other students. She says, no matter what, keep applying and applying and don't give up. That's great advice indeed. Well, there's more news ahead for you here on WBKB. Coming up, Mayor Matt Walagora tells us what's ahead for Alpena, and meteorologist Ellie Morrison will have your seven-day forecast next.